Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. I'm here on another Subscriber Rides episode, and this is Frank. Frank's been a long-time subscriber to the show. Thanks for having me out here, by the way, Frank. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Yeah, he lives in this beautiful spot in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, you've got a 75 Bronco? 75, yes. How did you find it? Well, um, I had a, a 69 years ago, and like most guys our age, we sold them and wish we hadn't, so I thought I'd try to get another one. So I started looking, and the best place that I found was Craigslist. So yeah, was... I looked at a lot of them all over the country, and um, some of them I'm glad I didn't buy, knowing now what I, I know. Yeah. Where would you find this one, local? Uh, this one was down uh, uh, right towards the Oregon border. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Frank also happens to be the guy who picked up my old motor, the one that you saw at the end of season two, I believe. And you got that rebuilt, right? Yeah, yeah, I got it rebuilt, and um, uh, I made a mistake. I didn't cover it good enough, and the water got in the back cylinders, and... This is of your original motor? The original yeah. motor, and um, had I known, uh, I would have taken a little bit better care of it because it had just been rebuilt. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have known Matt previously and been able to trade uh, trade a few things for, for his motor. Yeah. So, and I'll show you that too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a tour of Frank's shop. You can see what he's got going on right now. He's got basically the whole thing torn apart the way I do, and he's he's basically at the same stage of the build as mine. So let's get to it. And there she is. That's my old motor that I had written off prematurely, I might add. And Frank got it. Nice, deep Ford oval blue here with, uh, is that Edelbrock? Yeah, Edelbrock manifold on there. Looks great. I'm digging it. I'm digging the old school uh, valve covers. Here's a Dana 44 front end, two and a half inch lift springs. And Frank lucked out because the kingpins new, the uh, tie rods are new, the drag links new. So we were just talking about maybe just cleaning that up. He was talking about maybe cleaning it up and painting it because I, I don't see the point in tearing into it if, if it's got disc brakes and, and all the the uh, suspension ends are, are new. And then here on the rear, he didn't get as lucky. He's got the, the Ford 9-inch, of course, but I don't know if you can see it, but in here it's actually bubbling through because there's there's some sort of a, a hole in the, the weld, so he's gonna have to get that repaired. The one part of the build that's done is this top, and it looks great. I mean, it doesn't come out on camera because it's, it's in a garage, but really nice finish on this white top. He's got the Smitty built rack, which, which was this designed for this Bronco? Uh, no, this was uh, actually in a Suzu rack. Oh, but, um, yeah. I just took the dimensions. And I believe that this rack is uh, the same rack that's on Tom's personal. Oh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it looks like he's got the, the, the uh, what do they call them, the gas lift struts on the, the rear tailgate. And he's got a white, is it lizard skin? You yeah, know? it's a lizard skin. Yeah, he's got that matched, color matched lizard skin on the inside. So this top, you know, if the Bronco's anything like this top, it's going to be great. So not Bronco related, but... I walked past this boat thinking it was new, and then Frank pointed out he's actually restored this boat, and it is mint vintage boat. I mean, this would be so cool on the lake. And here is Frank's frame in the trailer, ready to go to the sandblaster, and behind that cardboard box is a C4 that he's also going to get rebuilt. Okay, <laughs> enough teasing. This is this is the body, and and actually it's. In some places, it's in much better shape than mine. Like down here in the rockers, it's it's a lot cleaner. But in the floor, I'll show you somebody that really nice top he's got in the garage. You're yeah. saying somebody left holes in it, right? Yeah, there was holes in it. Somebody had put a makeshift uh, rack on it, and when they were done, they just pulled the rack off, and it just leaked water. Leaked into water, it. and you can I'll show you in the bed where it's sitting. But can you uh, can you run this handmade rotisserie? You made this rotisserie sure. out of. Um, 
out of Unistrut with pillow bearings. Uh, and you watch how smooth this thing is. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's like butter. Oh my goodness gracious, that's so good. Yeah, he made these frame rails, so it's good because it's going to keep it nice and steady when he's working on the body if he takes out any structural members. But, you know, we are just talking about it. It's got this great undercoating on it, but he's got to replace the floor because of the rust, so it's kind of a shame, but he's got to do what he's got to do. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to nickname that Bronco Daylight <laughs> because it's on every, every single one of them. You see the rust just pooled in, the, the water pooled in the bed, and the rust ran all along the uh the wheel wells there and of course you know he's got that same the same guy who patched my floor apparently patched your floor <laughs> and standard everyone's got it you know i mean it's not there's nothing special but the front looks pretty good you know and it looks like you redid you replaced this panel right yeah the air fender i replaced yeah and was that hard it, it actually wasn't too hard um I, I would probably stay away from a uh, spot weld cutter. Learned a little bit about spot weld cutters. The best way, if you can, is just grind that spot weld off, pull the panel off. If you're pushing a little too hard, you're gonna burn right through both pieces of steel and then you got two holes to fill up. Wait, so what did you use instead of a spot weld cutter? Grinder. Oh, you just gr grind it out? Yeah, I just okay. grind the... Just grind the, uh, find out where the spot welds are. And um, of course you'd have to take a wire wheel and wire wheel off, there's a spot weld there. So typically I would just take a grinder and grind that off. Just like a dentist would grind off your enamel to fix a cavity. And uh, just take your time and go down through all these. If you use a spot weld cutter, these, this panel, both of them are gonna have to be replaced, but the uh, support underneath you could still compromise by drilling through that and then you'd have another hole to fill so the best way is to grind to grind them out and then you save either this piece or the under support so you so, but the grinder makes a bigger opening right <clears throat> yeah the grinder makes a bigger opening but if you if you have to replace the panel anyway you it doesn't matter if you're going to try and save the uh the panel then i can see using a spot weld cutter um i just I just found that it was easier and much quicker to just take and grind them. Your bed stakes are in pretty good shape, just this here. Yeah, looks good. You got a lot of work to do, just I like know. me. That's a lot of work. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Bronco voice too also. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my prize for that engine that Frank's putting in the Bronco. He traded me these uh, chrome bumpers, and they're in great, great shape. So, great find for me. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> no. Think about it now, and it would have been kind of fun. Yeah, Hollywood's all right. I, mean, I used to live there. In LA anyway. So, thanks, Frank. Thanks, buddy. You're a good dog. You're a good dog. Yep. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Good luck with your up. build. Yep. Thanks. See you up. next time on Matt's Garage.